uh, welcome to today's uh, Santa Mac weekly sales training where I'm going to show you how to prepare a seller multiple counter offer in 15 minutes okay now if you are new to my channel uh, consider subscribing to the channel hit the bell for further notification of new uploads that way you don't miss a thing and if you like this video share it with your friend all right without further ado let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you a different screen right now uh, it will say new because I'm adding a new template okay now this new template will be uh, select a template or type to get started uh, let me say new purchase or offer here the name of the template is uh, seller multiple Remember, I am in a template mode, so what you're seeing is the actual uh, inputting of the name of the template. It's called seller, multiple, counter offer, and click residential, and then uh, I'll save it under my template, so save it, okay? And uh, let me see if I can find the template. Hang on a second. There are no documents to display. Hmm. Okay, let me go back to the list again. Seller multiple counter offer. Double click. Oh, I need to get it into that folder here. So uh, let me add the forms. All forms. So it will say SMCO. SMCO stands for seller multiple counter offer so when you look for form always use the acronym you save you some time so i'm going to click seller multiple counter offer number one okay and i'm going to double click that now this is a template remember so seller multiple counter offer number i'll leave the number uh blank because sometimes you will have to do more than one multiple counter offer so but on the other hand, if you don't do a lot of uh, multiple counter offer very frequently, I think it is safe to put one here. But if you have to change it, just change it. Now, this is a counter offer to the purchase agreement. Most of the time, it is. However, sometimes it is uh, something else sometimes it could be uh, the buyer uh, most of the time i'll leave it as a uh, the default which is purchase agreement because it's a template i'm not gonna put other here but sometimes uh, you are making a multiple counter offer to a buyer's counter offer so you would just click other and and input buyer's uh, counter offer okay the date will be left blank property will be left blank now one of the most common multiple counter offer uh, it will say buyer to submit okay best and final purchase price Best and final means that uh, you are not actually making a counter offer of a with a new purchase price. You're basically telling the buyer to submit their best and final. That's also another way uh, to weed out all the buyers that are not serious. The serious one will give you their best and final. Now, let's say, for example, uh, this property that I'm selling in San Carlos, we have a listing price of $2.4 million. Now there's a low ball uh, offer that came in at 1.8. Now we uh, counter them with uh, 2.22 million dollars. And then they counter back at 1.9, okay? Uh, so we're tired of uh, you know going back with a different number. We don't want to bid against ourselves. So we basically just put down 
best and final purchase price in our multiple counter offer. Now, when you do a multiple counter offer, you're actually making simultaneous or concurrent uh, counter offers to more than one buyer. That's why we call it the seller multiple counter offer, which is different from a seller counter offer. The biggest difference between the two is uh, the buyer, even if they accept everything that is on your multiple counter offer, it still does not become a binding contract until you have countersigned their acceptance. What that means is you give them the seller multiple counter offer to more than one buyers. And you don't want to commit to a single buyer by making this uh, multiple counter offer. You want to reserve your right to pick the best of the uh, buyers that you can find. So let's say if I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, this uh, uh, multiple counter offer that I'm doing for my St. Carlos uh, listing, which is $2.4 million. Now I sent out a buyer to submit best and final purchase price to two different buyers. And they both came back with uh, a uh, their best and final. And based on that, I can decide who I want. So even if they submit a new price, we still don't have a, a binding contract because I still get to pick a buyer from the multiple counter offer that I send out. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay. And then it says here the following attached addenda are incorporated into this uh, multiple counter offer. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, there are so many terms and conditions in the multiple counter offer that you run out of space and uh, you want to include an addendum, which you can. Now, the binding effect here, this number two here basically says sellers making multiple counter offers to other prospective buyers on the same terms. Uh, or maybe may not be the same. So you can actually make multiple counter offer uh, on different terms to different buyers. They don't have to be the same terms, okay? Now, it's actually, uh, that's just a template that I prepare, okay? Uh, which I don't really think that I have much else to say. If you just use the default, it's actually a very quick way uh, to design a template. So I'm just gonna click it save, okay? Now, uh, let me go into my transaction. Let me go back here. I go into transactions, and I go into 240, 240 Coronado, which is my San Carlos uh, listing. And I wanna use a template. So I would click a uh, document and uh, I will say apply template. And I'll click sell a multiple counter offer and apply. Okay. So I got a template. Uh, not this one. Let me look for it, SMCO. Uh, this is actually not the template, but uh, for whatever reason, because I already have a pre-existing uh, seller multiple counter offer uh, number one, which I did not create from template. That's why you're seeing this. Now, what about if I, uh, what about if I delete this, okay? And now I'm going to apply template. Let's say I let me. All right, go back into the folder. And I'll go into documents. And uh, I'm gonna apply template. And I'll click sell a multiple counter offer. Apply, okay. 
All right. Let's see if I can find that template. All right, I got that template here. You see, uh, my default is uh, sell a multiple counter offer number one, which is right one. And I'm making a multiple counter offer to the purchase agreements of different buyers. So they all, in my case, I've chosen uh, the same terms for all the buyers, but you don't have to use the same term. You can use different terms. You just go ahead and input today's date, okay? And then uh, the purchase agreement was actually dated yesterday's date. So I'll put uh, August 3rd, okay? August 3rd was the, uh, oh, actually it wasn't a purchase agreement. It was a buyer counter offer number one. So in this case, I'm making a seller multiple counter offer number one to one buyer. And then I'm making a seller multiple counter offer number one to another buyer. They both have to say number one because I'm making it to two different separate buyers. This is the first time I'm making the multiple counter offer. They the both will say one. But in the case of one buyer, it's actually a multiple counter offer number one to a buyer's counter offer number one. In the case of another buyer, it's actually a seller multiple counter offer number one to a purchase agreement because that buyer just submitted a purchase agreement. So you gotta make sure that you you check the right box and input the right information. If it's not a seller multiple counter offer number one, please do not check the other box. You will just go with the default or purchase agreement. Now, uh, it will say here, buyer to submit best and final purchase price. Uh, you can add whatever terms you want to add in your multiple. So for example, you may say buyer, it will say buyer to pay for all escrow and title. Now, because I'm, I'm selling a fixer upper, so I can make the buyer do that. Uh, pay for escrow and title, okay? And then it will say uh, other terms, for example, it will say seller to rent back 60 days, okay? Now again, because it is a fax fixer and also my seller wants a 60 days rent back. So whatever additional terms you need, you just put it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and uh, it will be safe. Okay. Now some people will put uh, things like uh, all other terms and conditions remain the same. Uh, it's not really required, but if you want to put it in there, uh, that's fine too. Okay. Uh, it is really not necessary. Okay, now it's time to do e-sign. Now when you do the e-sign, uh, you always want to include the buyer's uh, counter offer. Okay, now in this case, uh, uh, you want to include the buyer's counter offer in your uh, e-sign, but since I don't have it uh, uploaded to my folder, so I'm just gonna skip that. Because uh, the proper way to prepare a seller multiple counter offer uh, number one is to attach the buyer's uh, counter offer number one to the seller multiple counter offer number one. Sign both documents. Have your seller docu sign both documents. Now, if you have, if you are making a seller multiple counter offer number one to a purchase agreement, then you will want to attach the. Uh, purchase agreement to the seller multiple counter offer number one. So you have a complete document. So you, uh, whoever that is uh, looking at the seller multiple counter offer number one knows to which document you're making a seller multiple counter offer. Okay, now if I go through the e-sign and I'll click my seller's name, okay, close. Bear in mind, I'm not attaching the buyer counter offer number one, which I should, but I have not had it uploaded yet. So uh, when you're actually doing it, make sure you attach the buyer uh, counter offer number one or purchase agreement, whatever the case may be. So you have a complete set of uh, counter offer that you are sending. So I'm gonna say click next.
No, because my seller is the one signing it and I'm not signing it. So there's only one signer. You just double check that, okay, this is uh, highlighted. Now if it's highlighted, next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna click send and then you're gonna click close. Don't forget to click close because that's a critical step. If you click send and you don't click close, she might not receive it. Now, because I'm not doing the real thing, uh, I'm going to not click the send, but when you're doing the real thing, you have to click send and then click close, okay? Uh, that concludes today's training on seller uh, multiple counter offer number one. And uh, I uh, wanted to uh, uh, just sort of uh, uh, mention that uh, this is our weekly training. And if you like this video, please go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, remember to do it. Okay, see you next time.